Hello, dear squidlings. Let us start by contemplating the void, a huge expanse of darkness wrapped in on itself, going on to eternity. In there, there is no bigotry, only the freedom of being freed from a physical form. Sometimes the void will wrap itself around you and squeeze. This is known as a void hug. It exists because the void loves you and wants you to be happy. Now I shall return you to the physical plane, and well, something is horribly wrong. There are fascists running around, infecting people with propaganda and yellow bile that they do not need. Hey, fascists, try taking an emetic and then eating some ice cream. Get rid of all that nasty yellow bile making you so vindictive, and then apologize to all the minorities you've dicked over. Yellow bile is an explanation, not an excuse. In addition to that, many, many people are trapped in emotionally unfulfilling jobs that don't pay enough, but they can't quit because if they do that, they can't pay rent. Depending on where you live, healthcare is either too expensive or have waiting lists that are so long people die while waiting for treatment, usually of old age. If you're a person of colour, the police is more likely to absolutely screw you over for reasons that range in severity from petty to non-existent. There is an ongoing hate campaign in the media against trans people, and people are mostly completely unaware of the issues that face aromantic, asexual and intersex people. And of course, the planet is on fire. As I record this, the Amazon, one of the biggest carbon sinks, is burning and has been burning for over three to four weeks with smoke that can be seen from space. Low-lying islands are at risk of disappearing under rising sea levels. Indigenous people all over the world are finding it harder to carry on their traditional way of life for a variety of environmental factors. Weather events are getting more extreme. So when looking at all of these issues, you may want to do something. Maybe get involved in campaigning, or at least email your representative, telling them to stop focusing on intra-party drama and actually do something about real issues. And I will encourage you to do so. Everyone should be able to do activism on issues they care about. If they can't, they're excluded from a certain part of the democratic process, and that's bad. So when organising, you want to make sure your events are as inclusive as possible both because that's the decent thing to do and because the more inclusive you are, the more people will attend and having more people there will make your event more effective. There are many ways an event can lack inclusivity and events that cost money will prevent poor people from attending. If your group has an issue with harassment, then the victims will be less likely to attend and so on. But here we are going to talk about making sure disabled people are included. Why disability? Well, 25% of the population have a disability of some kind, and excluding 25% of the population from your events is a terrible idea. In addition, I am most involved with climate activism, and there does seem to be a connection between that and autism. Anecdotally, a lot of climate activists seem to be autistic, including well-known figures like Chris Packham and, of course, Greta Thunberg, whom we stand. Given this connection, I feel this makes the need to make activism inclusive have increased importance. Also, some environmental protections manage to harm disabled people more than they help the environment, which we shall get back to. First of all, there is out right ableism. This tends not to come from climate activists themselves, but cowards who are scared that their massive carbon emissions are getting criticised. So they attack Greta Thunberg for her age and autism. Seriously, if you're writing articles about the tone of voice of someone half your age minimum, who is not just fluent but eloquent in multiple languages and is trying her very best to make the world a better place, you may want to reconsider your life choices. At the very least, think about why you are so angry. Don't spend fake concerns about her being a puppet when five lines ago you were calling her a cult leader. Stop pretending you're being altruistic. Still not as bad as this guy who decided to deliver thinly veiled threats on Twitter. The other external limiting factor is the police. In the UK, the police have a habit of making files on activists, regardless of whether or not they break the law, because the police exist to enforce an order that benefits the rich and powerful, and activism threatens that order. 
In addition to this weird authoritarianism, police like to share the files on disabled people with the DWP, who then take away their benefits because the DWT seems to want to kill disabled people through negligence. This means that it's important to have some kind of support network in place in case someone loses their income. Maybe have a group fund in place for emergencies? Now for more internal issues. Let's take the straw thing. Recently, there have been bans on disposable plastic straws to reduce plastic pollution, especially in the ocean. However, many disabled people have pointed out that they need straws to be able to drink, and alternatives are often problematic. Some straws have allergens, some straws can't deal with hot lipics, metal straws can cause damage to teeth if someone is prone to spasms or has poor muscular control. In addition, 46% of plastic pollution in our oceans is fishing nets, whereas straws make up less than 1%, but nothing is being done about fishing nets. It's not even a good way of reducing pollution. Another thing is veganism. Meat production causes massive greenhouse gas emissions in addition to deforestation to rear the animals. So many environmental activists recommend veganism and can get pretty salty if you aren't vegan. However, it's not very accessible. Vegan substitutes are super expensive. And if your diet is already restricted by allergies, medical diets or sensory issues, it can become almost impossible. I have friends who are able to eat vegan at home but find it impossible to stay vegan when eating out. Being able to go vegan is a privilege, and please don't be a dick about it. What I am saying with these examples is that you need to consider different needs and experiences before deciding on a demand. Encouraging certain lifestyle changes is fine, but there is an exception to every rule, and your experiences are not universal. The final thing to consider is how an event is planned. So let's go through some steps you can take. First of all, avoid places that lack wheelchair access, i.e. places that require you to go up or down stairs. Make sure you're near accessible toilets and have a space to sit down, because protests can be tiring, and if you experience chronic pain or chronic tiredness, it can be hard to get filled with what I like to call protest energy when you're in pain or have zero energy. Also, a lot of disabilities come with bladder issues, and nothing ruins your day like having to stand or sit in your own urine. If you can get a sign language interpreter or if the kind of event you're organizing allows for it, captions for our deaf friends. Have a disabled person or panel, depending on the size of the organization, whose job it is to go over your plans and make sure they are accessible as possible and also listen to them. Otherwise, you will just be wasting their energy and your resources. In addition, be sure to emphasize forms of activism over the big public protests. Marches, sit-ins, blocking roads, etc. are a lot of fun and get a lot of media attention, but for a variety of reasons, not everyone can get to them, especially if your protests happen to be focused on the capital, which, while understandable, can be annoying if you live on the other side of the country. So while you can handle some of these issues, if, for example, you set up a fund for travel or accommodations, money isn't the only factor. Make sure people know that it's okay if they can't get to an event for whatever reason, because if you don't, they'll still be unable to get to the event, but they'll feel like shit and that doesn't help anyone. Make sure they know they can still help. The simplest way to do this is to boost the fuck out of the event. Most people have some form of social media and while Twitter is a hell site, it's very good at spreading awareness. Art is also often good. The art of the protest sign is an underappreciated one and making one for a friend or for yourself and posting it online can be a fun way to be there in spirit or in solidarity. Also, graphics discussing an issue can be a good way of spreading the message. Contacting representatives is accessible to anyone with an email, though I keep getting ignored. I'm just trying to participate in a healthy democracy, but Fine, keep ignoring me, you coward. Apparently, the void is not a legitimate address. What is this discrimination? If you have panels, try to video them and post them online so as to make them freely available. There are probably other simple steps that you could take to make things inclusive. One event I went to used jazz hands instead of clapping because some people find clapping to be too overwhelming. But the most important thing is to listen to the needs of those who need accessibility measures in place. And lastly, if you are 
are, for whatever reason, unable to make something accessible for a particular group, tell people. Include the information on the Facebook page or the invites or whatever, so you, at the very least, don't waste their time. When building the bridge to a better world, you must make sure that everyone is able to cross it. Otherwise, who are you building it for? Don't forget to validate me by liking, subscribing, commenting and giving me money.